Hello, very good evening to all of you. Today we are going to talk about laser and uh, every day everybody is using laser. So you must be aware of the different mechanisms and uh, what type of laser we are using, how does it work and uh, what are the different questions which can be framed from laser because at, after all we are going to appear for the FRCS exam soon and for your section two it is very important from your technology point of view. Many candidates are being asked on lasers so please Stay connected for the next 10 minutes. We are going to talk about in depth the discussion on the laser, all that is required for your exam. Okay. So first of all, you should be knowing the expansion of the laser and thing it's you can easily uh, remember it. It's light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. Okay. And if you know the form of the laser, it's very easy to know the mechanism. How does it work? Because it's related to that only. So when you talk about the mechanism, how a laser works, please think about a chamber. Think about the chamber and think about the chamber has lining reflecting mirrors. Okay, there are reflecting mirrors on the chamber and there is an energy source. Okay, now how does it work? So there is an energy source. This energy source is going to be released to the lasing medium. There is a lasing medium here within the chamber and this medium is mainly a uh, commonly used medium is a YAG. So YAG crystals. So most of the time you will hear we talk about Holmium YAG laser, ND YAG laser and uh, Tholium YAG laser. So what does YAG mean? YAG is a lasing medium. It has, it has crystals which is actually going to release photons. So what happens is energy source can be a flash lamp. Okay, this energy source could be diode. So this energy source is going to release energy to activate the lasing medium. Now, when the lasing medium is activated, the atoms, which are actually having electrons in a stable phase, now the energy is applied, these electrons are activated to the higher orbits. Okay, that's all about the physics. When they're energized, these electrons, they move to the higher energy sources, higher energy resting positions. Now, in doing so, they release energies that is known as photons. When there are too many photons released because of this energy source, which is activating the lasing medium or the YAG crystals, these photons are going to collide with each other, okay? The photons are going to collide with each other and in doing so, they will stimulate other photons or release of the photons from the atoms, okay? That is why it is known as amplified by stimulated emission, okay? So this is mainly amplification which happens due to internal collision of the photons, okay? And this is going to release an energy which is the laser energy which is released and delivered through an aperture on one side of the chamber. For your exam, you need to express yourself as there is a lasing chamber that contains a lasing medium with an energy source. When applied, it can be your flash lamp or a diode. This energy source is applied to the lasing medium, which activates the electrons from a stable to a higher energy orbits. In doing so, there is release of photons which collide with each other and there is amplified release of photons, which are going to be stimulated to release an energy, which is known as the laser energy, going to be released outside the chamber through an aperture. Okay. You have a concept you can express in your own words. Okay. It's only your concept should be clear. Then only you can express in different ways. Once you get this laser energy delivered from this aperture, you need to know three important properties. They are going to be in the same wavelength, same phase. So it's monochromatic and coherent, and they're going to be parallel to each other. So that's collimated. So remember the properties, monochromatic, coherent, and collimated laser energy, the laser energy, which is released. You get the laser energy, you know the lasing medium. This process of energy activating the lasing medium is known as the pumping, okay? So please try to keep these keywords into your answer. They won't expect you to know too much of physics, but this much is enough for you to sail through the exam. Now, once you have understood this, let us see this picture. This is another picture from a standard source. So you will see this very, very common thing that I've explained. You will see this image. And once you have a clear concept, now you can understand there are reflective mirrors there's an energy source, which is activating the laser medium to release photons. And this energy is now channelized from an aperture outside in the form of a laser output. So that's all that you need to remember. And the diagram looks easy once you have understood it. Okay. 
Now, uh, there are certain things you need to understand also. When we talk about the principles, there are two basic ways how a laser energy is released. It can be a continuous emission. It could be a pulsed emission. Continuous emission is required. Suppose you are doing an enucleation of the prostate. You need the continuous laser emission. Pulsatile emissions are required when you are doing a lithotripsy. So most common indication or use or an application of a continuous emission is an enucleation of the prostate. As you can see here, the throughout the time, this laser energy is activated. And in a pulsatile emission, the most common use is a lithotripsy. Okay, we are mainly sticking to our urological indications. Now we will be talking about pulsatile emissions because there is something to discuss really on it. And there will be scenarios given where you will be asked to talk about lasers, lithotripsy. Now, please try to stay connected for the next five minutes. It's really important for you to understand this. When you give pulsatile lasers, how does it act work? Suppose you are activating the laser paddle, okay? You're activating the laser paddle, the energy which is transmitted from the tip of the laser fibers is actually going to be released around the water before it goes to the stone. Suppose this is the stone, there is, because we are doing a lithotripsy with an irrigating fluid, so the laser fiber is going to be surrounded with a water or a saline or an irrigating fluid. And before it goes to the stone, now, how does this energy actually lead to stone fragmentation? This water which is surrounded gets heated because of the laser energy and this heated water is going to form water bubble. Okay, this water bubble is going to transmit to the stone. Now, it doesn't itself go, it creates a path for the energy to transmit to the stone. So, this water bubble is going to now create a space for the energy to be transmitted to the stone. But in doing so, there will be some loss or dissipation of the energy by the time it actually reaches the stone. So that's a problem with this single pulsed lasers. So at every pulse, suppose this is a pulse, the effective energy which is transmitted is less than this because this energy is wasted in formation of the water bubble and creating the path for that energy. So you need something for this. Now let us first understand it once again. When you press the paddle, the initial energy is absorbed by the surrounding fluid and it forms a vapor bubble okay, around the tip of the laser. Now, this bubble expands and it goes towards the target, but in doing so, there will be some dissipation of energy. Now, even if there is dissipation of energy, we will come to that dissipation aspect later on. The energy which is transmitted to the stone, that is going to cause the lithotripsy. Now, how does the energy which is transferred to the stone cause lithotripsy? Okay, so there are different mechanisms. One of the mechanisms is a photothermal mechanism. It's very obvious that the laser is the photothermal, is the heat which is generated in the stone because of the transmitted water vapor bubble. This is going to cause stone fragmentation. Now, there are certain water vapor bubbles within the stone composition as well. Now, these water vapor bubbles are going to expand and further cause micro explosions within the stone and cause stone fragmentation. There will be another problem. When there is increase in the temperature within the stone, the chemical bonds within the stone are going to disrupt. There might be sulfide bonds in the cysteine, there might be uh, calcium oxalate bonds, there might be different bonds are there to form a stone. Okay, they are broken down. So the stone breaks chemically as well. So that's known as photochemical mechanism. So how does the laser cause stone fragmentation? If you are ever asked this, or if you have ever to understand the physics, remember the photothermal mechanism, the photochemical mechanism, and this whole thing, conversion of thermal energy into the mechanical fragmentation of the stone is known as the thermomechanical effect. Know this, so don't need to memorize anything. Try to remember the concepts. Always it is the concept which is going to help you to excel in your exams. It's not the facts, okay? Just remember the concepts. So you need the energy to be transmitted to the stone. More the energy that goes to the stone, earlier is the fragmentation, earlier is the process done. But what happens in a pulsed laser? Out of the pulse that you deliver, some energy is dissipated and wasted in formation of a water bubble to create a path till the stone and then, so that's not very effective. So what can we do this? What is this problem known as? This whole problem is known as Moses effect. Let us understand the solution also for this Moses effect. So what is the problem? half of the laser pulse is lost in the bubble formation due to the Moses effect. This is the problem. The solution for this is the Moses technology. Now, how does the Moses technology work? It works by the principle of pulse modulation. What is pulse modulation? This is the single pulse which causes the Moses effect. That means dissipation of the energy 
due to the water bubble formation. So, there is, so if you give a single pulse energy, only half of it is going to reach the stone for fragmentation and for the proper lithotripsy. So you need something before you deliver this single pulse. You need some small amount of energy to create the path so that you can deliver this large energy to actually cause stone fragmentation. And that is what the Moses technology has come up with. This is not a new technology. It's an age-old technology. There have been years, but you should have a clarity in your concept. Then only you can express it. Moses technology means that you are basically allowing a small pulse first. This low energy initiation pulse is going to generate the water vapor bubble. This water vapor bubble is going to create the path till the stone. So that by the time you generate the second pulse, a longer and more energetic and full strength pulse, this is going to cause the stone fragmentation and photothermal and the photomechanical and the, uh, the photochemical, all those mechanisms will be acting more efficiently because your path for the second bubble has already been created by a low energy's first bubble, okay? First low energy impulse. So this is the basic concept. Please try to remember, if you give a single pulse, half of it is vested in formation of the road till the fragmentation is done road till the stone that has to be created and that is wasted in the so you use a smaller low energy initiation pulse this is the low energy initiation pulse which creates the path before you send a high energy pulse to actually cause it effect okay so this causes more stone ablation and it decreases the operative time let me explain it by a short video i think you, you will understand it better now this is the standard this is the moses technology Okay, now you can see in the standard, this is the, suppose the tip of the laser fiber and this is all the surrounding fluid and suppose it has to reach to the stone. How does it reach? See, for this, there will be generation and see, you can compare both the things. In the upper video, you can appreciate there is a single wave which is produced. The single wave which is produced is is going to, uh, the bubble is wasting the, the uh, energy. A lot of energy is getting wasted there. In the second one, you can appreciate there are two pulses. The first low intensity pulse basically creates the path. And the second pulse you can appreciate, it is getting transmitted very, very easily. Try to notice it again. You will appreciate in the Moses technology what is happening. There is a short low impulse pulse, this one. And the second one is getting transmitted towards the stone. Okay. Whereas in the first one, if you say this, there is only single pulse and most of the energy is getting wasted there before the actual one being transmitted to the stone. So please try to understand this basic mechanism. I won't remain under the impression that these are very difficult uh, concepts and you won't be expecting this. These are lifetime information that you should have. Everybody is using laser, okay? We are using laser every day. If you don't know these concepts, it's difficult for you to answer the questions, okay? If you don't know it, you can't answer them. You can't make up these concepts. You can't make up these answers in the exam hall. When you are sitting in front of the examiners, your concept should really, really be very clear, okay? That's all which is uh, tested in this whole exam. This is the Moses technology, okay? So for your technology, your technology, you should be confident with this whole concept of laser. So what all did we discuss? We discussed the basic principles. How does a laser work? We discussed about the types of laser, the pulse laser and the continuous emission laser, and about the problem with the pulse laser is the Moses effect. The solution to that problem is the Moses technology. Please let me know if you have any questions. We will discuss it further. So there's a long discussion on the lasers, okay, like the different types of laser and all. We'll be discussing them in the class. This is mainly for the queries which I was getting. So hope you find this useful. Thank you so much.